Welcome to New World Workforce, where we examine the latest trends having an impact on the way we earn our money and live our lives. I'm Nikia Edwards, HCC's Executive Director of Adult Education. You can find us through our social media on the Houston Community College District Facebook page, not HCC, and also YouTube. We're also on uh, X, LinkedIn, and HCC TV. You can also download an audio version of our shows for listening on the go to go at hccs forward slash podcast. So when we talk about immersive technology like virtual reality, many of us think about gaming, but immersive technology is having an impact on so many areas of our lives, including how we design and visualize our homes, our workplaces, and any other space we inhabit. So we're joined by Jackie Barry, an instructor in ACC's interior design program to share some insights. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Jackie. How are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? Well, I'm doing awesome. Good. And so, uh, Jackie, I have a couple of questions for you. Sure. So give us an introduction on how uh, designers use immersive technology to communicate with their clients. Well, first of all, thank you for having uh, me and letting us um, sort of uh, give some recognition to our great program uh, of interior design at HCC. Um, I'll start off by saying that I think sometimes people don't really know what interior designers do. And so this is just opening up a whole new world for us um, when it comes to these new technologies, virtual reality, the immersiveness of it all. So not only uh, do designers use it, but how we teach has become, you know, a little bit different um, using these things, um, not only um, as designers, but as instructors. Um, as far as the design side of things go, um, we still rely on our traditional design process. We still, uh, you know, meet with our clients, have programming sessions, and, um, and that usually results in the first product that we produce, which is a floor plan. Um, the floor plan then eventually turns into elevations and even 3D renderings. But all of these things are really just still 2D artifacts that we present or had presented to our clients. What this new technology does for us as interior designers is allows us to um, immerse our client into an actual environment. So um, some people might start recognizing the way uh, retail is happening online, that you have the ability to go into Crate and Barrel now. Well, you know, we're hoping that this technology will allow for interior designers and architects to actually design those virtual reality spaces. So that's one way we're using it, but it also um, in in school and in the profession, um, it gives us the ability to see 3D environments like we've never done before. Um, you know, when I was in school, uh, we would build physical models, you know, and we'd get down and look at those and get inside them. But now we can actually put on headsets and um, have our clients go into spaces that we are designing and they can work with us right away um, when they see things about, you know, oh, could we look at this that might be different? And we can change that in real time for them and be in the space with them while we're doing it. Wow. You know, the, this virtual reality is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, um, you know, I'm I'm pretty excited of it because, you know, it's almost like, it, you know, I don't know if you remember the transition from the BlackBerry to the iPhone. Right. People didn't want to let go of the BlackBerry, but I mean, the doors, it opened and then other uh, different uh, things have to adapt to it. So that means when virtual reality uh, continues to blow up, then everything kind of adapts to it. And, and so it kind of goes into the next question. You know, I know you talk about the impact on the design process itself and building those 3D models, but does it bring certain efficiencies that kind of help the industry? Oh, definitely. Because, um, you know, especially for our students, you know, now sort of being and having the ability to, and this is what we're teaching them, right, to eventually sit down with clients and, and work through this process and, you know, being able to go into a 3D design space and in real time say, well, what if we, you know, sort of made this room have a 12 foot ceiling instead of a 10 foot ceiling? What would that feel like to, to the space? And so, uh, 
that allows us to just be more efficient, you know, with interior design and architecture, uh, budget and schedule, those are the words that we're always, you know, having to pay attention to. And so the faster we can get things to a point where the client understands what our design really looks like and what we're envisioning, the better off the client is, right? Um, so less fees to sort of get to a fa point faster in the process, I think is good. And another thing that is also helpful is, is looking at iterations of things, um, as I was mentioning, you know, faster, instead of us having to hear what the client said, go back to the drawing board, produce something, then set up another meeting for them and have them look at it again. Now we can do it right in real time with them. So yeah, the efficiencies of time. Um, and I think that's one thing that's having a really big impact on our students is not just the virtual reality and uh, that side of things, but AI in general, right? Because we're teaching them to use these as tools to enhance what our process, our tried and true process has always been, right? So we still go through all the phases of the project, but we can get to answers, I think, a lot quicker. And um, that's all because of this new technology, for sure. The, uh, AI is another component to the, the VR piece where yes. uh, it, it's just... I was just scrolling through some videos uh, today and, and I was talking about some really good tools that students can use. Uh, and I just had to forward to my kids because they're in high school and one's going to college. And, and you know, you know, I like using all the resources we have available. So that's pretty awesome. Yes. I mean, I think that's the point, too. We have lots of conversations with our students about, you know, they're like, oh, chat GPT. And it's like, no, I don't want you to write an entire paper with chat GPT or any of those other AI things. But if you have the ability to save time, one of the things we do in interior design is put together schematic designs that we show our clients, like we show them three different ideas and that could take a lot of time, but now we can go on to the computer and use these tools and produce these things really quickly. And like I said, get to that, um, that decision-making a lot faster. And I think that firms really um, are looking for that for sure. Well, look, that is definitely awesome. Uh, great conversation, great answers. I, I really appreciate you bringing this to, to our attention and, and explain it to us as well. Uh, you guys doing are, are, are doing big things, and you're over at the West Houston Institute, correct? Classes? Well, right now we are. We have classes at the West Houston Institute, um, but our we're we're at Central mainly is where our um, you know department is, and um, we've got lots of great things coming, uh, lots of initiatives where we're um, going to showcase all of this technology that interior designers use for sure. Well, look, keep us abreast of all the information so we can get them to you. And so, look, we're, we're really appreciative of you coming with us, Jackie Barry. We're going to take a short break here, and then we'll get our uh, boots on the ground look at how designers use immersive technology. Thank you so much, Jackie. Great. Thank you. At HCC, your dreams are within reach. When I grow up, I want to work at the hospital. When I grow up, I want to work in a lab to build robots. When I grow up, I want to work at a school and be a teacher. From classroom to career, we're with you every step. Register for real-world education at hccs.edu. Welcome back to New World Workforce. Today, we're looking at the impact of immersive technology on interior design. We're joined by David C. Usher, Vice President and Interior Studio Leader for Corgan. So, Mr. Usher, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes, it's great to be, great to see you and also to hear about what the industry is doing. So tell us a little about Corgan. Corgan is a architecture and interiors firm that works um, around the globe from all kinds of spaces that people uh, work and uh, some where they live, so multifamily, but also we, we do, uh, we build, we like to say we build the cloud and uh, the data center work that we do, we do uh, aviation 
Uh, <clears throat> so airports, we do offices and um, education projects and, and healthcare projects. So we're in a lot of different arenas in uh, primarily in the commercial interiors uh, field. And so, and so I guess that's how the immersive technologists use that core is, is in those, all those different industries. Right. So um, we use a variety of tools uh, mm -hmm. from virtual reality to augmented reality and uh, to communicate to our clients uh, the ideas that we have for their projects. And, uh, you know, as, as Jackie mentioned in that first segment, it's a really important communication tool that helps get clarity and explain to people who are uh, hiring us to do the design work for them, really communicate with them what, what we're about, what the ideas are. So we, we are in the kind of ideas and advice business but we sell um, services that end up in a built environment. And a lot of times that built environment is challenging to understand without some, without some visual help. And uh, we used to do still renderings and uh, drawings and we still do those things, but we found that um, creating an immersive experience lets uh, our clients understand more of what we're proposing much earlier on and much more readily. Uh, and, and I'm sure, and, and you know, the transition from paper and pen to computer uh, drawn out thing is, is like hard for some who've been doing it for multiple, multiple years. And now right. here we have this new technology coming up. Is that, a, is that a hard transition or are people really adapting to it or they have no choice? <laughs> um, there's, most most practices have adapted to it, and um, almost uh, a lot of practitioners are are using or working in three dimensional modeling software already. Which, uh, from a designer's point of view, it helps us understand the space as we create it. So, um, working in two D only, you're looking at a representation of a three dimensional space in abstract. When we start looking at it in a three dimensional computer model we're able to sense more of the proportions of the space, what it's like to be in the space. And uh, with some of these tools like, you know, the VR and AR, we're able to share that with uh, other collaborators, um, <clears throat> you know, the consultants that we work with, as well as the general contractors who are building the spaces and the, the clients who are um, ultimately gonna be the beneficiaries of the work that we do. Wow. So tell me this, uh, David, you know, so what, what advantages have you seen in using immersive technology? I think from the designer's standpoint, it um, allows us to approach a, um, a project with uh, empathy and a better understanding of kind of the impacts on things. And there's a couple different things there that I want to kind of mention as an example. So VR and AR is what a lot of um, folks will think about when they think of immersive um, experiences or immersive environments. And what that amounts to is a simulation of being in a place or in a particular environment. And having that experience can give can help you empathize with the occupier of that space. Something else that we have done at Corgan and as part of our, our research department is we've developed a um, gerontological suit which simulates the effects of aging on the human body. And so it allows for young designers to put on this suit and their vision is a little bit impaired, their mobility is affected. And for somebody who is very young and vital and um, has, you know, uh, doesn't know what it's like to be in an advanced age, they can experience that and then be more thoughtful and more empathetic as they approach their design work that impacts those populations. So that's one uh, kind of simulation that we've found to be really effective. And there are ways to do that through purely through technological means as well. Good stuff, I, that, that sounds great. And so now let me ask you this, this other question. Tell us a little about how forward thinking programs like those at ACC have contributed to a more prepared workforce in your industry? I, I think sometimes the um, the barrier to entry on some of these technologies is at the senior 
leadership level, somebody who might not know how to use these tools, um, they might be a little afraid to get their get into it. And so we're really de you know, dependent on people who are learning these things in school, who are embracing the technology and are really adept at it. So I think HCC has done a, in the interiors program in particular, I think has done a great job of getting their students engaged with the technology, using it as a design tool and also as a presentation medium. And it's, that shows up in the portfolio shows and uh, the, the work that they're producing. And it's really exciting to see. So companies that are looking to get into that technology really benefit from students who are learning that and learning how to explore it and exploit that, that technology as a student, they can translate that right into their work life. Wow. And in Earl, you mentioned AR and VR. How can you plainly explain the difference? So uh, VR is a virtual reality, um, completely computer generated environment. And so you, you might see, uh, you might think of the, the goggles that people would put on to experience that. AR is where we are taking a computer model and overlaying that into an existing real environment. So imagine you're out at a at a project site and you're looking through through your computer lens or even through your phone using that camera and the images of the the building are placed in the in that site and where wow. you can kind of move around it and see it and experience it relative to where you're standing. Um, and we see that in everything from, uh, you know, looking at what does this couch look in my look like in my space? We see that in online retailing, but we're leveraging some of that same kind of technology in our design work to help people imagine in the context of the space we're working, what the new design would look like and feel like. Right. And, and and that's what a lot of the websites are starting to do now. Like, hey, you want to buy this couch? You know, what does it look like? Like you said, and yeah, uh, that is. And then now on our cell phones, we can measure rooms and get dimensions of the rooms. And so, so it is it, the advancement of these tools that they're utilizing. Uh, it's just it's just pretty amazing. So it uh, is amazing, David. I appreciate you know the work that you do, and I appreciate Oregon. Uh, and then just, you know, just working with HCC and, and uh, you know, we're, we're glad to provide you, you know, quality students that have graduated with the program. And then we look forward to uh, working and continue to work with you. So I thank you so much. For your excellent, excellent information again. You know, so after this short break, we'll be back at, with a collaboration that's enriching student learning at HCC. David Usher, I appreciate you. Thanks you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. When the alarm goes off, don't stress about what comes next. At Houston Community College, we make your lessons matter. Do you love helping others? Turn caring into a career. Interested in tech? Code your way to a career. Want to make your voice heard? Build a business. Hands-on enthusiast? Construct a career. Open the door to HCC's real-world education, where passions become careers. Welcome back to New World Workforce. We've been talking about extended reality and interior design. We're joined by Ruben Duran, director of the, the Reality Co Collab at HCC. Welcome, Ruben. How are you, sir? Uh, doing great. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Awesome. You know, Ruben, um, I don't know if you remember, but I remember when they were building that lab out at J.B. Widely. Uh, and I was I was on the other side of the wall, and you guys were knocking all the power off every now and then, and and we just was you know I was like, man, what are they building over there? What are they building? And there was uh, the VR lab, which which uh, was truly once it was finished, you actually walked me through and said, hey, even nurses can come train and be inside the heart, and I and I have not stopped talking about it since. So uh, I'm excited to hear uh, more about the program. Um, but just to get started, Ruben, so where is the interior design, architecture, engineering, and construction industry heading with XR? Well, that is a uh, really very 
interesting point when it comes to the what we call the AEC industry. They are in many ways a champion of this technology from the onset. Okay. Uh, we indeed decided to engage with interior design and the drafting programs at ACC uh, roughly six to seven years ago. And, you know, in, in XR times, that's, that's really an eternity, okay? But the AEC industry has actually embraced this technology from day one to improve inspections for better collaboration. Uh, when it comes to design, small design firms, they are eventually... Uh, working on client designers' workflows. And for me, uh, what I see is how many different technologies are coming together for these different extended reality workflows. So you would have what we call LiDAR technologies, you know, the same that the autonomous car use. Uh, you have students in the construction program at ACC that are using that same technology in an iPad to scan a room, okay, and get a floor plan of that room. Instead of having to go with a tape measure, they are able to scan the room using an a, a AR app with a LiDAR scanner on an iPad or an iPhone and have a floor plan with the measurements, with very accurate measurements of, of that. How is, how is ACC utilizing XR for upskilling students in the industry? So, you know, for us, one of the, one of the things that we also need to acknowledge is that uh, there are many ways in which the technology is being used. Uh, and I think uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Jackie Berry, described a few instances in which the students are using the technology. But to us, you know, that part of visualizing your, your work in a more efficient way in which you can actually invite other people uh, to go along the design process. Uh, it's a very powerful tool uh, to tell stories, if you will, to tell the story of your design. And, and that is one of the things that we have been very successful when it comes to uh, upskilling our students with this, uh, th this knowledge of using uh, powerful visualization tools, tools that are actually coming out of the gaming industry. And, and in many ways, I just see them in movies in Hollywood and, and, and some other uh, different areas. And, and our students are using those same tools uh, from, from this AEC uh, program that we have at ACC. Then you of course have uh, the design process in which the students uh, not only are able to invite other people inside uh, a space, but they are also able to create their own immersive portfolios uh, by, by eventually uh, uh, upskilling themselves in, in some of the different techniques and tools and workflows that we're doing uh, in our reality collab in collaboration, of course, with the interior design program and, of course, the construction program at ACC. Wow, pretty awesome. And, and so, look, your, your title is Director of the Reality Collab at ACC. Now, tell us about the Reality Collab. So, you know, the Reality Collab is actually uh, the evolution of what we first named the Virtual Reality Lab. Uh, the Virtual Reality Lab, in many ways, I think, is the very first of its kind in Texas. Uh, we actually uh, came up with it back in 2016. And then, of course, under the support of our then president, Dr. Muda Siddiqui, who is now the associate by the vice chancellor for innovation and digital strategies. Uh, this technology has actually taken off in an immersive way. And along with that, then our lab has grown to be what it is today. It is a place where uh, Professor Jackie Berry can teach a class uh, for interior design students in how to build these metaverse uh, spaces. Uh, using the same design tools and design uh, knowledge that they are actually getting in class. It is a place where we actually are engaging interns to collaborate in projects with industry. Uh, so we had a very successful internship with one of our students with a one of the largest construction companies in the world uh, named Skanska. And mm -hmm. we actually created through that particular internship a digital twin of our central campus where you can actually go in and you can 
eventually walk from one building to the other and so on and so forth. So, uh, and of course, we have interns that are also working with faculty to develop uh, immersive courseware where the students can actually uh, go into, into a, a, uh, an animal cell and, and learn uh, in, an, in an immersive environment. Uh, in, and of course, interact in that same environment with AI chat boxes that they can actually get information about that particular cell uh, in, in that space. Well, that's pretty good stuff. You know, the the type of work that is, and, and this has kind of been throughout this entire uh, segment, is that the, the the technology is just advancing and advancing, and it's not stopping. Um, you know, you've seen many movies back in the day where you know people were floating around in, in lounge chairs while they're uh, what do they call the, the the people in the game were actually doing what they were supposed to be doing. Uh, so, well, look, you know, we we appreciate the work you're doing, Ruben. Uh, and I've noticed a lot is heavy and, 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 it, and it's ongoing because I'm sure you got to learn this thing. This uh, technology is just advancing on it almost on a on a daily basis. Uh, just how it, it's just advanced from, you know, six months ago to today. So we appreciate, you know, the work, the hard work you all, you all are doing over there at the collab, the reality collab. So that's pretty awesome. And how it's also spread, because now we have the the sites that we have at ACC is is at JB Wiley, West Houston is to Central, and at um they have some stuff at uh uh um Wesley, right? Yeah, some of the uh so uh, out of our lab, then uh the college decided to scale uh to right. some of the other areas. So uh we were just informed that there is an XR lab at the Stafford campus now. At the Katy campus also is actually using that technology uh, wow. because, you know, when it, when it comes to this technology, you have to understand that it's very easy for students to collaborate in immersive spaces from different, you know, areas in Houston, wow. in fact, all par- you know, all parts of the world. And so uh, this is one of the technologies that allows for that in a, in a very immersive and uh, in, in amazing way where the students can be collaborating and, and designing in one same space. This is this is some good stuff, and it's it's constantly growing. And look, it's been awesome. We appreciate you, uh, and, and great segment. So, uh, look, if you like more information on the people and organizations featured today, check the posts on our social media sites and YouTube. To download a copy of our audio podcast version of the show, visit hccs.edu forward slash podcast. And for for everyone here at ACT, HCC TV. I'm Nakia Edwards, and thank you for joining us on our new world workforce. Ruben, thank you so much again. I appreciate you.